Hey guys, it's Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. All right, so for today's video, I thought I would talk about my most recent Pearson. I have gotten a lot of questions here on YouTube asking me if I've gotten a new one recently. And if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you know that I did. And I think I may have mentioned it in a video. But yes, I did get a left forward Helix Pearson a few weeks ago. And so I thought I would do one of my traditional all about my blah, blah, blah Pearson videos. So I did get it done Thursday, July 27th. I went to my typical piercer that has done most of the piercings that I have. If she didn't do them, then someone else from the same tattoo shop did them. I've primarily gotten almost all of my piercings from this one specific place, aside from two of them. So at the time of this video going up, the piercing is roughly four weeks old. So definitely not completely healed yet, but we have gotten past quite a hurdle, which I will get to in a moment. So when I was deciding on jewelry, you all know that I am very partial to titanium. It wasn't until several piercings in before I realized I could specifically be like, hey, I want this type of jewelry. I didn't have to settle for the standard. Yes, you do have to pay a little bit extra for the nicer quality jewelry, but you know, that's, that's just something I'm willing to pay for especially since my ears are sensitive to certain metals. It really seems to like titanium, so I stick with that. So when I was picking what kind of stone I wanted, I opted for something a little bit more different compared to the rest of my, you know, just standard stones. I did a little triple stone right there. It's, it's a tiny little triple stone. I'll insert a picture over here so you can see an up close image of it. And I just thought that was kind of the perfect stone to put in such a tiny space. All my other ones are a little bit bigger, whereas this little triple one is a little bit smaller and dainty looking. So I thought it would look good. Now I will say I do eventually want a double forward helix, but I opted to only get one done at a time for two reasons. Number one, when I was talking about one in this piercing, a lot of people on Instagram DM'd me saying, oh my God, it hurts so bad. Definitely only get one done at a time. So I did heed that. And number two, it's such a tight, smaller space that I wanted to give at least the ear enough time to heal one before I decided to throw two at it. So we started off by having the Apprentice Piercer. I think that's the proper title, I'm not entirely sure. But she did give me two markings on my ear and let me pick which one I would want at that time. I did tell them up front that I would be coming back for a second one, so they made sure that it looked good by itself, but also left room for that second one. Of the two markings, I did end up picking the higher of the two, so when I go back for my second one, it will be a little bit lower down in here. After this, the piercer herself came in, she inspected the mark, made sure that everything was looking good for her to actually you know, pierce the site, and then we went from there. She then proceeded to get ready, which included, but is not limited to, or in the correct order, because yo girl was not really paying attention, but she did wash her hands, you know, took the jewelry out of its sterilized packaging, put on some gloves, all that good jazz that you would expect from a good sterilized piercing area spot, facility, whatever. All I know is she did everything she's supposed to, duh. So my piercer did use a clamp to make sure that everything was even, everything was steady. There wasn't like any accidental movement that would cause the needle to slip or anything like that. It is a tighter space, so I guess it's a little bit more difficult to get a clamp in there. I don't know, I didn't feel any discomfort or anything like that, but I know it's a smaller area, so it's like less surface space for the clamp to actually grab onto. Um, but I know one was used. So, as for the piercing itself, I'd give it maybe a three out of 10, possibly just a two. It honestly was not painful. I know when it was actually done, I think I, I think I believe I said the words, oh f that didn't hurt at all. I always build it up in my head that piercings are gonna hurt because either I've read something online or people have told me that it's gonna hurt. I got all these DMs on Instagram saying, oh my God, it was probably the most painful one I've gotten. It was so painful to get done, you know, be prepared for the pain, yada, yada. And so I had built it up in my head that it was gonna be super painful. It wasn't, it hardly hurt at all. It was probably one of the least painful piercings I've ever gotten, if I'm being honest. Now, healing wise has been a different story. Like I said, as of this video uploading, it is 
a little over four weeks old. So obviously it is still in the healing process and will be for a long time. Six weeks is like that bare minimum. And that's when I'll start looking at getting the second one. You know, it could take six months for it to completely heal. What I will say for the healing process, roughly two weeks after I got the Pearson done, it became horribly swollen. I have no idea what happened. It kind of was a similar situation to my double helix. If you remember that story, I'll post it up over there, but something happened and all of a sudden that was super swollen and it was super painful and I could feel it throbbing in my ear. And, and after, you know, 48 hours, 72 hours, it went away. Similar situation with this forward helix. I honestly have no idea what happened. All I know is that literally almost two weeks to the day after I had gotten it done, it became very swollen. I could feel it pressing up against the drawer and there's a, it's a long enough post that was supposed to account for potential swelling, but this was swelling like no other. It was excruciating. My ear was just constantly throbbing. So I had to take Tylenol. I had to take an ice pack to hold it on there to either numb the pain or help with the swelling. It was bad and it stayed that way for roughly 72 hours. I have no idea what happened, what could have gotten in there, because up until that point, I hadn't had any problems. Now I will say I have hit it accidentally a few times, mostly because those first two weeks, I kept forgetting it was there. It didn't hurt at all. You know, I'd clean it like normal, take H2O Ocean, get up in there, just clean around it and everything like that, but it never truly hurt or gave me any problems until that right over the two week threshold mark. That's when it got really bad. And again, it lasted about 72 hours. It was that entire weekend that I had issues. Finally, it subsided. Now I will say since then, it has bled a little bit each day and it's gotten a little crusty every day, but it's nothing like it was. It's no swelling now. It's just a lot of that crusty stuff that comes along with the healing process. I have continued with my cleaning regimen. So I do my H2 Ocean once in the morning, once in the evening, but I have also started to incorporate that Provon lotion soap that I really like. I only use it once every other day because like I mentioned in a video, it's not the best thing to use for a brand new Pearson. It's more suited for once the Pearson has been around for a while and has not necessarily completely healed, but healed enough because it can still be harsh, even though it's a lotion soap, it can still be too harsh for a brand new Pearson. However, I have found that cleaning with it once a day or actually once every other day just kind of helps get any of that buildup nasty nearby that maybe the H2 Ocean hasn't gotten. It's kind of helped keep that down, keep everything flushed out, keep everything clean, and it just makes it feel better. So I have incorporated that, but when you do clean your piercings, you gotta make sure that you know you still flush everything, get out any residue because you can have buildup from your cleaning products and that's not always a good thing either. So even though the actual piercing itself was only about a three out of 10, I will say the healing was a six out of 10 or has been, it's still healing. So far is a six out of 10, just because that whole after the two week mark thing with the swelling and the bleeding, that was excruciating. It was up there with the double helix. So that was not something I was looking forward to. Not looking forward to that potentially happening again when I get the second forward helix, but it's something I'm prepared for now. Because I hadn't happened, because that hadn't happened with any of my other piercings aside from my double helix, I wasn't necessarily prepared for it this time. But when I go get the second one, I'll be at least anticipating that it could happen. Not looking forward to it though. So like I said, it's still healing. It's only four weeks old as of the time this video goes up. So it's got a long way to go. But when I do get to that six week mark, that's when I'll start looking at going back to get the second one. I don't think I could do a triple one in there, but that's fine. I had originally only wanted a double. So I am excited to get that one. Let me know in the comments below if you yourself have a forward helix. Also let us know, you know, if you do have one, how the actual piercing pain was for you and how the healing process was for you. Everyone's body's different. Everyone reacts differently to it. You know, everyone was saying that the actual piercing itself was super painful. I didn't find that, but the healing process has been a bear for sure. If you have any questions regarding my forward helix or any of my other piercings, leave them in the comments below myself and others in the comment section will happily answer anything we can for you. Again, we're not experts. We're just enthusiasts. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button, wherever it may be, because I don't know. Even though I do, this is just 
mistake now. Also hit that notification bell in case you want to know when I upload and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys. <laughs>